Hello again folks. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at this Learn About Simple Electronics book. A little trip down Nostalgia Avenue if you will. Now quite a few people have asked me about this book. You know, did you own it as a child? Do you indeed still have a copy? And to answer those questions again in this video, um, yes I did have it as a child and it certainly helped spark my interest in electronics. But sadly my original copy is long gone. It was probably handed down to my younger brother or went to a charity shop or you know, one of my friends, something like that. Um, but thanks to eBay I managed to track down a copy. So I thought it'd be uh, a really nice thing to go through. Um, like I say, it certainly helped spark my interest and you know, probably helped spark your interest uh, or indeed you know, got you into your career in electronics that you're doing today. Before we get into the book itself, we'll talk a little bit about Ladybird, uh, Ladybird Books. Um, Ladybird produced a, a huge range of books uh, predominantly aimed at children. Um, they were founded in 1867. Uh, they're still going strong today. It's the 150th anniversary this year. And yeah, they, they, they produce books across the entire spectrum basically everything you can think of they did a book on everything from your traditional stories like the magic porridge pot and cinderella all the way through to advanced stuff of learning about space and you know science and they did this range of learn about books as well which were um, educational and predominantly sort of getting you into a hobby or learning more about a hobby and certainly if we look at the back cover um, it shows you the other crafts and hobby books that they did produce um, and whilst we've got sort of hobby stuff like stamp collecting and you know I don't know sewing and crochet um, there were more sort of trade related books if you want to call it that metalworking and woodworking um, the kind of uh, the way I see it is they were they were almost preparing you uh, for leaving school and getting into industry, you know, going to work in a workshop or going to work in an engineering facility, something like that. They were really, really good books um, and, and really engaging. And when we look inside, you'll see how they've done that and why it's a captivation keeps you interested. Um, but yeah, this book, this particular book, uh, was released in 1979, which was the year I was born, in fact. And, um, you know, by the time I could probably interpret this and... In, in, you know, understand it, I would be 9 or 10. So you're looking at the, the late 80s, early 90s, something like that. So at that point, whilst I did remember the book, um, sadly, I never built any of the circuits in here because at that point I was going to Tandy to get, you know, electronics kits and stuff like that. Um, Tandy, if you're unaware, um, is uh, or was the British arm of what was Radio Shack in the US. Um, but yeah... So, we tracked down a copy. Um, I thought we'll, we'll go through it and talk about it as we go. So here we go. Inside the inside cover. Um, he, inside the inside cover? Inside the cover. Um, we've got the component requirements. And the you know, pretty much simple components that you can get off the shelf today. Um, the only real exception is these AC128 germanium transistors. Um, those are a traditional... Traditional... Uh, transistor um, and pretty much the only place you can get them nowadays is um, you know eBay either old stock or you know salvage stuff um, but you know if you know MD that still produces those type transistors you know and, and you know currently then please comment below and with a link in that if you can um, so yeah there's all the components uh, a little bit of introduction about the space age and you know satellites and stuff like that and, um, you know, gives you a little introduction about how, you know, everything that you've got in your house essentially is starting to have electronics and, and all that good stuff. It then moves on to how you're going to build the projects in this book. And it's it's really, really nice, really traditional. It's the 70s version of a breadboard, essentially. Um, we've got a little piece of wood, um, screwdriver, a little awl for making holes. And the way you're making your circuit and connecting the wires up is using little brass screws and brass screw cups screwed into a piece of wood simply with the, the wires underneath. Really, you know, really nice. Um, I suppose it's kind of steampunk would be the... Um, the construction if you want to use this a modern term a um, little bit of information about the transistor shows the emitted base and collector and all that good stuff and then it takes you on to you know your first basic circuit in this case a transistor switch so of course if we move on we've got the, the actual 
illustration of how it's actually constructed. Um, and it is, like I say, just a piece of wood with the, the screws and the screw cups. You know, the, the flying leads come off the transistor. A little uh, switch, you know, in this case, a, another piece of fly lead wire. Um, and, you know, you just touch it, it uh, causes a transistor switch and completes the circuit and turns your bulb on. And just look at your bulb holder, just a little paper clip as well. You know, really, really traditional, really sort of how you do in, you know, hobbyist stuff. Basic but functional is how I describe it. Then expands on that circuit and shows you basically adding a, a, a electrolytic capacitor in there. So that's the time delay switch. So when we make the circuit, the capacitor will charge up before it then uh, switches the transistor and completes the circuit. Um, a flip flop, and that is certainly one of the circuits that people can remember that have commented uh, before. They they can remember building this flip flop circuit. Um, so it shows you the it shows you the, the the circuit diagram or schematic, and then um, shows you how to make it. And uh, there's the illustration of that there. It then moves it on to another little project, and basically showing that you can put on a. A different shaped piece of wood and it makes it look like a little bit of a, a sorry makes it look a little bit like a robot using the transistors as arms and the, the bulbs as the eyes so yeah ideal for a, for a child in the, the 70s i um, got a little audio oscillator circuit you've got a little crystal earpiece uh, you might recall them um for the the older ones that watch um you used to get these with your little transistor radios that you take to the football you don't tend to see them much nowadays but again we'll probably get those on ebay quite easily again how you make it little illustration and then it expands upon it shows you how to put a moss key in there and then shows you how to make a two-way MOS station so you can have a remote receiver so that somebody can then decode the message you're sending out. And then, you know, to tie in with the educational piece of these series of books, it actually talks about MOS code and how it works and shows you how to code and decode a message up. So really nice. Again, another nice illustration down there. Right, audio oscillator circuit again. But this time using a pot to vary the frequency of the the you know the modulated uh, sound. Photophone again using uh, an LDR or in this case a cadmium sulfide cell uh, to vary the resistance and again cause a change in the the, the frequency of the the audio. And then a further expansion of that showing you how to make an electronic organ. Shows you how to make a keyboard circuit. So basically, again, another bolt onto the audio oscillator circuit. We've got these keypads here with a little pot there so you can tune each key to, to a different frequency. Simple tuning, uh, sorry, simple electronic organ tuning the keyboard. I would never have thought of that. You know, if we think of a carbon film resistor, what it's saying there is use a little uh, file to cut a notch in, in the resistor. And that's obviously going to change the resistance um, and subsequently, you know, or consequently change the, the frequency of the audio. You know, I would never have thought of that had I, had I not seen this in this uh, book. Really quite interesting. And then it shows you how to add an audio amplifier for a bit of a louder output. Yep, another vibrato or vibrato. Um, that's an organ function. You know, your old style organs would have that function. It's again just a bolt on showing you how to, to add it into your, your uh, projects. And then finally, it basically says some extra ideas and shows you that you can actually build it into a project, actually build a functional organ with a keyboard all in a, a wooden enclosure. And at the back, we've got a little bit of... Uh, you know, there's a glossary telling you about what, what the, the things do. Um, there we go, transistor, an electronic component which takes an active part in the circuit. It's three conductors, emitter, base and collector. A small current change in the base will produce a larger current change in the collector. You know, really basic terms telling you how it works. And then we've got, um, you know, uh, some other useful books, making a transistor radio, uh, two transistor electronic projects, all that good stuff. Uh, in fact, there we go. I didn't even, you know, didn't even check this. Uh, Stop by Tandy Stores Limited. Uh, 
monthly magazines for the beginner, Everyday Electronics. I think they are still in existence. I think it's uh, Everyday with Practical Electronics now. And um, there we go, Electronic Component Stockist. The following companies will supply by post suitable components for the projects in this book. G. Birkett, 25 The Street, Lincoln. Watford Electronic Components and Maplin, or Craplin as I like to call them, Electronic Supplies in Essex. Yeah, a fantastic little book. Um, I hope you enjoy going through that with me. Um, my intention is, I suppose, um, if you've watched this video and you've seen a circuit you like or you remember as a child, um, put in the comments below and I will try and source traditional components and we will build it in this traditional manner using a piece of wood and the brass screws and screw cups i think that'd be quite quite nice quite nostalgic to do so as always if you did enjoy the video give me a thumbs up if you didn't give me a thumbs down um, if you haven't already done so and you'd like to do so um click on my fat head here uh, and as always until next time take care of yourselves and all the best